Good evening, everyone. Um, happy Friday. Long holiday weekend ahead of us, so that's exciting. I hope you guys have plans. You know, for the most part, I know it's going to be nearly impossible to have the normal, the typical plans that we all would have given the situation that we are going through. But anyhow, today's video, I want to go over a couple of different things that have been happening here on my channel, things that I feel are extremely important to talk about. It is not a video for music, if that's what you're expecting, that's that this is not it, okay? This is simply for me to talk about changes, things that have occurred, and to talk about the Mephisto, to talk about the Griffin VIP series of cabling that they have, and to see what has happened here ever since I introduced those cables in the system okay so let's get right to it so I had the opportunity to work with my dealer uh, Suncoast Audio and um, we talked after I purchased the Mephisto and I was able to get some cables uh, demo cables cables for me to try now mind you the idea came from me to want to investigate this further because I felt like the Mephisto when I dropped it into the system it was really a special component and it is a special component but it let it, it, it kind of felt like I expected more at first I expected a lot more than what I was hearing um, I thought it was gonna just blow me away um, completely and it definitely had that impression initially that preliminary feeling but as you sit with a component over the next few days or weeks you begin to pick them apart pick the component apart and figure out what are the pros and cons of the new component that you have added some of the pros that I found right off the bat was the sheer power um, everything sounds effortless with the Mephisto. The sound stage, the bass is just unmatched. It is number one when it comes to bass control out of any power amplifier I've ever owned, period. Doesn't matter. Call it Coliseum, Momentum, nothing comes close to the bottom end control of the Mephisto that I have personally owned. I want to make sure that I'm clear on that. That said, the high frequency in the mids are all beautiful but i always felt like there was something that it was an instinct it was something inside of me that didn't let me quite relax and listen to the music um i felt like it was so much of it so much power so much coming at me that i almost wanted to run behind the seats and hide if that makes any sense um, it wasn't exactly that it was bad, no. It was more that, it was more about it being too much of a good thing, if that makes any sense. Anyhow, um, so I spoke to uh, Mike at Sun Coast Audio, and I told him about my interest to bring some Griffin cabling and to figure out, and again, this circles back to what I've already told you guys. Figure out your baseline, your foundation. So in an attempt to do that, I went ahead and told him, can I please try some of the Griffin cables? I went ahead and on a higher note, sent me for me to try the VIP XLRs, a pair, two pairs of those, two sets, VIP power cord and the uh, matching speaker cables, VIP series. So, when I got him in, let's keep it real. We don't exactly expect a manufacturer of electronics to really deliver some of the best cables out there. When we are looking for cables, we think of the Cardas, the Nordas, the Wire Worlds of the world. We're thinking along those lines because we have been trained to do so by the industry, by reviews, reviewers, forums, whatever you want to call it. We have been trained to chase those 
who only build cables for a living. Who, that's their main bread and butter. So like anyone else, I had Valhalla 2 cables, XLRs, Odin 1 speaker cables, Odin 1 power cords, and AudioQuest Dragon high current power cords. All in here. Drop the Mephisto. And although it was impressive to listen to, because there is no way around it, it is an impressive presentation, I felt like it was still not quite there for me. So I embarked on the journey of leaving it on for a few days. Let it cook. It's a class A amplifier. I am a believer that amps need to be on 24 seven, unless you're talking about tubes. It's a different story, a different conversation. But I believe amplifiers, if you can, if you can, okay, there are some amplifiers like the Mephisto, Plinius, Block Audio that are smart enough to turn, you can set, you know, the settings on it. You can select settings that it doesn't draw a lot of current. The old Krell and all of that's a different story. You can't really do that with those amplifiers. But anyway, I left it on. I let music play. We tried the Audio Research Reference 6. Again, please circle back to my videos. You'll see where, what I'm talking about. Three different rounds we did with the Mephisto. Those rounds, I was using Valhalla 2 interconnects. Anyhow, so I said, you know what? Let's get some of the Griffin cabling in here. Let's try it. Let's connect it. Let's see what happens. I mean, at the end of the day, I have nothing to lose. And if I don't like them, you know, on a higher note was nice enough to say, send them back to us. So I said, why not? I jumped at the opportunity. And I proceeded to first connect the XLRs. So let's see. Let's take a look at the XLRs. All right, so right now we can put this puppy on mute before we, so it's on mute. Now I can unplug everything I want. So this is the XLR. All right, looks, it looks, it feels pretty, pretty thick, very well built. Um, overall, it, it does feel like a very well, really, really well constructed cable. I mean, I really, they're the, the ends of it feels really, really nice. So I said, okay, let me try it. It's going into the Merrill Audio, Christine, okay? And I said, okay, no expectation, let's try it. If it doesn't do any, any good, I'll go ahead and send them back. So I wanted to start one step at a time. I know I had said that I wanted to just plug them all in um, and then see what happened, but I thought that was the wrong approach. So I decided to do it gradually. We started with the XLRs. So I took out the Bahala 2s, introduced the Griffin cables, the VIP series, the XLRs to be specific. Everything else remained the same. Took a seat, song began. The music was the size of those magna pens, first of all. The sound stage was the size of those things. It was that massive. Immediately, it was just, it swallowed me whole. Number one, the sound stage was ridiculous. Okay, that's one of the first things that just wa I was like, wow. Musicality is something that it completely transform the feeling of the Mephisto. Those cables make the Mephisto mellow out. It makes they make the Mephisto kind of take a nice, relaxed approach to the presentation while still remaining the beast that it is soundstage opened up bass if you see one of my videos or a couple of my previous videos with the mephisto you can hear an overpowering amount of bass right when i put these cables in the mix just the xlrs again that bass became completely even with the mids and the highs now that bass was no longer overpowering the room it was no longer kicking as hard. It was still doing it, but it wasn't really calling attention to itself. That leads me to believe the Valhalla 2 XLR has some meat on the bones, has some bass added to it. The presentation adds more punch on the Valhalla 2. And the Mephisto doesn't need that help. At the end of the day, the Mephisto has zero interest in that kind of... Um, presentation 
Now, what happened, another thing that occurred when I introduced these XLRs, the separation was incredible. I almost felt like people were opening the door right there to the room. And that door was open and the separation and the instruments were, were right between the door and the speaker. That's where I hear sometimes instruments. Before, with the Vahala, everything was kind of like in the middle. Still big, but nothing anywhere near close to the size of the Griffin cables, XLRs. Um, another thing, another attribute, darker. Some of the darkest background I have ever heard out of any cable period that I have ever owned. It is so incredible. That XLR goes so deep in the recording that you wonder what else could, could there possibly be behind this, this music. And then you start to find out there was more information that I am shocked the Valhalla really failed to extract with, with this system. Um, and I still don't understand how could there be more information. And mind you, some of the, I have some of the best XLRs. I've tried some of the best XLRs, but not with the Mephisto, which I will say towards the end of the video, my take on this. I'll, I'll give you my reasoning for this. Anyway, let's continue. When I used the Valhalla 2 XLRs, I always felt like the Mephisto sounded good, but it was, it was, almost, it was almost like on a shot of Red Bull. Does that make sense? It felt like the Mephisto was always um, going 100 miles an hour. And you couldn't get it to slow down. It was either not moving 0 miles an hour or 100. That's the feeling that I got with the Valhalla 2 and the Mephisto. So when I put the new Griffin cables, now you had miles to go. You can go 10 miles an hour, 20, 30, 40, 50, 35, 45, whatever you want. That's one thing this cable added. The other thing that this cable did, which I thought was interesting, it felt like the Mephisto was running on six cylinders with the Valhalla. And when I added the Griffin cable, now all eight cylinders are firing correctly because of the size of the presentation, because of the depth of the presentation, because of how submersive the feeling is now of the Mephisto. Now you feel like you're inside the music. Changing cables, just XLRs alone, and using the matching Griffin cables made it feel like I, there is a door between the speakers and somebody opened it and I'm walking right through it. Now, I will say this, that unfortunately many dealers, not all, but a lot of dealers, haven't really given the Griffin cabling a shot. The Griffin cabling in my opinion, is amazing. And I am right now blown away by what I'm hearing. And it was so, so incredible what I heard that in less than 24 hours, I had purchased the cables, the XLR cables, and I have sold my Bahala to interconnects. They're gone. In less than 24 hours after I received them, I went ahead and said, I want to buy them. And I decided to buy both sets of XLRs, both Griffin XLR cables. Okay, so that just, and mind you, with the amount of experience and different types of listening that I have done, you can only think, wow, okay, if I heard something that is, it must have been something special for me to go out there and in less than 24 hours, immediately make payment and say, I want them. They're not going anywhere. And just completely sold the Bahala 2s. I want to make sure that I'm clear on this. I'm, I am by no means saying the Griffin cable, XLR cable, VIP series destroyed the Valhalla 2 Nordus cable. I didn't say that. I'm saying in the system that I'm currently running, that the, the one that I'm using, the VIP Griffin cables is by far superior to the Valhalla. End of story. That's what's happening right now. And I am not going to deny that. Now, if you remember my previous videos, I always said, and I am I, I'm showing you with proof, when you introduce a new component in the system, you are more than likely having to make changes somewhere else 
to capitalize on the added improvement that you should experience if indeed is a move, a step ahead, a step up the ladder. That's what I'm doing. I'm showing you. That's exactly what I did. I literally just got, just sold my Valhalla to XLRs and now I'm using the Griffin cables because I am planning to continue to push hard with the Griffin Mephisto. So it didn't make any sense for me to hang on, hang on to the Valhalla. I mean, I, if I need another set of XLRs, I think I have another sex, set of XLRs there. I have some other XLRs that I could use. If, if I have another set of amps that I want to try or whatnot, I can. Okay, so let's make sure that I'm clear on that statement. Nobody here should say, oh, the Valhalla got beat by the Griffin. No, no, that's not what I'm saying. The Valhalla, in my opinion, does not work with the Griffin. It makes the Griffin sound too... It's like it's, it took a shot of espresso or Cuban coffee and it's just t wired. Okay. And on top of that, I felt like it was funny. It's almost like it's revving the Mephisto always at 10,000 RPMs and never, it's never able to let off the gas. That's the feeling that I got with the Valhalla. With the Griffin cables, that's not the case. It begins to just add just the right amount of texture tonality um you know the resolution on in the upper registers uh the mid-range is perfect the bass comes down but you still feel it when you need when you, when you need to feel it it's all there it evens out everything now guys i want to say this that this is something that a lot of people have asked me and this is what I was asked, and I'm going to answer this question because I, I believe many of you, many of you wonder and wonder this and are probably going to ask me after this video too, but I'm going to answer it right now. Jay, why the hell would you buy an amplifier like the Mephisto, this kind of amplifier, and then still have to spend more money on cables, on power cords, on XLRs? on this, on that. Well, I'm gonna say this to you. Number one, one answer to that would be, the Mephisto is not by any means a fix to your problems in your system. If anything, it's going to expose him even more. It's gonna make him even worse. That's number one. Number two, the Mephisto is not gonna turn a turd of a speaker into gold. It's not going to do that for you. Griffin hasn't figured out the formula to do that yet. So it doesn't do that for you. Let me get that out of the way. That said, why am I spending more money now, having already owned the Valhalla XLRs and other speaker cables, and now have to spend even more money to make the Mephisto work, when it should be an amplifier that, according to some of you, you could use a lamp cord as a power cord and it should be able to come in here and destroy any amplifier that I have owned in the past. See, that's where you're wrong. That's where you're wrong. You know, I will say that I have found that that phenomenon happens in different industries. How so? Think about the car industry. If you go out there and you and you buy a Bugatti and now you need four tires, you can't go buy those tires online. You can't go to TireRack.com and just buy the tires for the car and put them on. They don't, right? You have to go through your dealer. It's probably a special size tire created to maxif maximize, maximize the performance of that vehicle. You can't put another tire on that car. At that level, you can't. You can't do what you want. You either follow protocol or you are literally opening a recipe for disaster. So the Mephisto is Griffin's top of the line amplifier today. Whether it's the stereo or the solo, the mono blocks, it's still the top amp they make today, right? I believe at this level, and again, this is the highest one of the highest levels I've ever gone when it comes to amplification. I believe at this level, manufacturers, whether it's the car industry, audio industry, gun industry, uh, whatever, 
any type of industry, when you get to their top of the top of, of their product lines, you're almost in a position where you have to make a decision. Meaning, if I go there, do, am I ready to spend more money? And if the answer is no, my advice is do not go there. Just because you can pay the mortgage or make the monthly payments on a $2 million house doesn't mean you can afford it, right? You still got the taxes to pay, right? You still got the gardener. You still got to pay for a new roof every 30 years or whatnot. The maintenance of the house. So, no. That's the same logic here with the Mephisto. It's no different. So, when you get to this, when you get at this type of, with this type of, to the, you know, to the top of the electronic of a particular manufacturer, you have to keep that in mind, guys. You have to chase what the manufacturer intended for the for the product for instance in my situation right now is i'm trying to figure out where the mephisto when they built it i want to hear it here what they built but guess what i can't i can't do that by using the merrill audio right there just there just that i can't do it just by you know using whatever cable i want that's not going to give me the right tonality. That's not going to tell me what Griffin intended. That's not going to tell. That's my own flavor. I'm adding my own seasoning there, but that doesn't mean that's how they, you know, created and 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 designed the product. So it so in reality, you need a true baseline of the product by putting the system together the way the manufacturer intended it to be. Then from there, if you hate the outcome, that's when you can begin to change a pre-amplifier, cables, you can begin to do whatever tweaks you need. Footers, still points, stands, you can begin to do what you need to do. So the point I'm trying to make here is, I believe that when you are at the top of any kind of product, you are better off sticking with the manufacturer that it was designed by this means if you like ch precision and you bought their monoblocks their most expensive monoblocks i believe they're one hundred and ten thousand dollars. if they were me i am buying and they're matching their best preamp i am not buying an audio research line stage i am not buying a parasound line stage i am not buying a griffin line stage I am buying a CH precision preamplifier for it because I believe at that level, all manufacturers do the best they can to make their components sound the very best using their own products. The synergy of that Mephisto right there could probably never be synergy that I could find if I begin playing Russian roulette swapping component after component after component after component and then i get tired i get fed up i never enjoyed it and i end up selling it now does that mean that there may not be a better preamplifier perhaps than the pandora for this maybe there is but then you have to do what i am doing all day every day buying trying and selling buying trying and selling constantly over and over and over and then figure out if you went forward or backwards you have to make you have to make that decision yourself do you want to do that or do you want to sit and enjoy so that's something you have to remember when you get to the top of the mountain on any with any manufacturer you're better off sticking to what they have built because I'm going to tell you something. When Griffin built this amplifier, I'm not an engineer and I'm not pretending to be one. I am sure they dialed it in to sound probably best with the Pandora preamplifier. Some people are using CH precision preamps with it, I was told. Some people are using um, AudioNet, I was told. Uh, there's another Darzeal, Dar Dar I think. It, it, they're using that as well. Some are using MSB DAX with it. But how do you know all those you all guys, all these guys that are with that combination? How do you know that that combination beats 
what the Pandora can do with the Mephisto unless you have owned the Pandora. How do you know? You don't, right? So that's my point. So why go through the trial and error constantly? I do that. This is what this channel was created for, for me to do that kind of work. But you all should just take my advice and listen to what I'm saying. At a certain point, at a certain price point, at a certain level, they're not going to build you a garbage can of a product that costs as much as a Mephisto and make it sound like garbage. Because remember, people who are buying these types of components usually are not your average Joes. And I'm not saying I'm anything special. I'm just saying, let's keep it real. And if it's garbage, it's going to get out there that it's garbage. Believe me, it will. Especially with social media, forums, websites, all kinds of things. It'll get out there. Okay? So, when you think about a product that you're contemplating, always remember, I recommend... Begin from the, from zero, and that is putting together the system that the manufacturer intended for it to be. Then begin to improve. I thought the Valhalla was the best, some of the best cable there is, but it is not with my Griffin. So now it begs the question, wow, should I do the Pandora preamplifier? Should I do the CH precision? Logic says, let's do the Pandora. And yes... I will say it here. I have the Griffin Pandora on the way to me. I have bought the Griffin Pandora. Because I don't want to try 30 preamplifiers. I don't want to try 20 DACs. Simple as that. So now if I try it, it's because maybe I already built my ba baseline system. I already built my Griffin system. And then I want to know, maybe now I want to know how a new component interacts with the rest of the components and what it does. For instance, I could tell you again, and I said it earlier, the Valhalla adds too much bass to the system. So if you have a component that's anemic sounding, you may want to contemplate Valhalla to XLRs. If you need more bass, if your speakers don't have enough punch or weight, you are the candidate for a Valhalla to XLR. Potentially, the, I'm assuming the speaker cables too. I don't know. I have never owned them. That's what this system is going to allow me to tell you. Because I'm going to be able to tell you, this went forward, this went backwards, this happened, this was lost. That's what I want to do. By pushing as much as possible with, with the Griffin components, the magic is incredible. The musicality is all there. The, the power, the punch... And I am going to tell you right now, openly, without any BS, okay? And even though I'm not done right here, you know, we're going to continue to do much more, many more trials here, but I'm going to tell you something, and I'm going to say it on, on this channel. This is the best amplifier I've ever owned, right there. That is the number one amplifier out of the 300, and I have had about 300 amplifiers, believe it or not. I had amplifiers way before I started writing on the forums or this channel. This is the best amplifier I've ever owned, period. Better than the Past Labs XS300, better than the Coliseum, better than the Cent Constellation Centaur 2s, better than the Momentum M400s, be better in every regard. But it has its requirements. Okay? It, it has... It needs its supporting cast. Remember that. It is in the type of amp that you drop and push play. That's not this amplifier. That's not that amplifier. It doesn't do that. It's not for that. That amplifier is the type of amplifier that either you set it up right or go home and leave it alone. You know, the momentum stuff, beautiful. Beautiful. It's, it always sounded beautiful. It didn't matter if you used stock power cords. It didn't matter if you used uh, lamp cords. It didn't matter if you used uh, cloth hangers as speaker cables. It always sounded good, right? It always sounded good. It can get better if you have a better supporting cast and have better speaker cables. It can definitely get better. But it's tuned to always sound good. But it never got to that good. Never. When that's set up correctly, the gap is incredible between both components. 
another thing that this amplifier does that the other the rest of the amplifiers never did when i'm playing music and i hate now i'm starting to hate streaming but that's a topic for another conversation when i play ampl uh, music here and i record videos for you guys that amplifier is so explosive and so dynamic that i have to constantly be with the remote control changing it up and down up and down in volume because you can hear the differences in the level the volume level of each recording how it was recorded so it's it's all it's a very difficult task to make sure that when i present videos to you guys that all three or four songs that i'm using as a test material stay within the same decibel level it's very hard but it's been the hardest with that amplifier because it exposes those things much easier it's, again it's not there's no such thing as spending that kind of money and expecting it to come in here or in your rooms and fix all your issues that that's not that's not what that is not just that amplifier any amplifier in general that's not the, that's not the point i know some of you guys um part of the question has been another question has been you know when does it ever stop i mean that's really a personal question i think each and one each and every one of you guys needs to answer that for yourself Right, because at the end of the day, you are the one that needs to be happy. It doesn't matter what I say. It doesn't matter what the other YouTuber says. It doesn't matter what he said. They said it. It matters what you like and what you're enjoying. That's the most important part. I don't care if your enjoyment is a pair of Emotiva, not to knock on Emotiva, uh, and uh, uh, Tecton speakers. Again, not not a knock on them. I'm just saying. It does not matter what you put together. At the end of the day, it's what brings you the most joy. And it doesn't have to be something like this. The reason that I have this, besides the fact that I love it, because I really do love it, is because it should allow me going forward to understand what each additional component that I bring, whether it's an amp or a preamp, is doing to the presentation. I also like the hop i do believe i know a lot of people say this and i'm going to say this to you guys this is another thing that it's never really talked about but i i can tell you today with all certainty there's always a conversation about oh something is extremely neutral oh something is extremely uh sweet oh, or something is extremely i believe i have never met a component ever ever that doesn't have some sort of not how sound but some sort of a sound signature i believe every component has something built into their dna to sound a certain way to a certain extent it's just kind of a product of the engineering of the product right boulder is accused of being cold and neutral but I heard from some people that when you add the pre-amplifier, again, you should never, in my opinion, and I, I should easily slap myself for saying this because I didn't do this. I don't think you should own a boulder pre a boulder amplifier without the matching pre-amplifier. I don't believe that's, I honestly don't, would never do that. I would never do that. I would never attempt to do that. And if I had boulder again in here to try, you best believe you'll have a boulder pre-amplifier there for sure. So, Every component, including the Mephisto, including probably the Pandora, the cables, they have some sort of DNA. If you ask me, what does Mephisto, what does what does the Mephisto do? What kind of house sound does it have? It's not a house sound. I would say it's dialed in to sound powerful, muscular, like Herculean effect. It's 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 almost like a space shuttle with in in terms of thrust and speed and 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 slam and. and it's dialed in to sound that way it, and, and it's still musical when you feed it a musical source so there is some level of neutrality there in transparency but the number one key thing that the mephisto has is that feeling that you are almost touching the instruments because of the amount of weight that it puts on the presentation it puts a tremendous amount of weight that's one thing it totally does and that's something that it could be just the design of the massive transformers, the capacitance. Um, there are so many variables there. 
that's some it makes it makes other amps sound like a middleweight and the Mephisto is the heavyweight that's the that's the best description it's just powerful one knock one knockout punch that's all it takes one one punch and you're out dead cold that's what it is and i think it's because the the desire effect is that this amplifier can drive any speaker and it can drive any speaker and we're going to try it with the magnet pens here to, off to my right um but remember what i remember when i keep saying it please if you look at your system today and you're contemplating a pre-amplifier and you have a great amp try to see if you feel the matching pre is something you should try before you begin trying other pre-amplifiers and other things try try that first and if you hate it you don't like it then at that point you can sell it but you tried it try what the manufacturer intended to do first okay that should be the takeaway of today's video i am going to have much more to talk about on the mephisto and the pandora whenever it gets here it's coming from denmark that's a long trip as you know and uh and I'll, and I'll say that the speaker cables, I'm still reviewing. I'm still trying to evaluate the speaker cables comparing to my Odin one and the power cord as well. I'm trying to evaluate. And the reason for that is because I'm waiting on the Pandora preamplifier to get here so that I can see what happens now to the presentation with the Pandora preamplifier and then figure out what speaker cable is best suited for my taste for my for what i like for my palette okay so remember that more more to come guys have a great weekend ahead of you and i'll keep pumping a little more uh a few more videos of the mephisto in action i i plan to play probably another one tomorrow saturday sunday uh until you know the rest of the artillery shows up here and i'm able to give you guys more of the mephisto and its siblings Thank you for everything, and please hit that subscribe button. It really does help me, guys. Subscribe to the channel. Share it with your friends. You know, um, you can always... I read all my comments, by the way. I'm always interactive. If you, guys, if, you guys, if you guys look at my videos and look at the comments, I try to be as interactive, as active as possible with you guys and, and, and respond to your questions as best as I can uh, or like your comments, um, and I plan to continue to do that every single day. When I roll out of bed, I'm looking at your comments. I'm reading what you guys have to say, so don't be afraid. Leave me your comments. Every comment counts. counts. Please subscribe. Thanks.